This is concept one, honors notes, all about the classification of matter. So before we can dive into classifying matter into different categories, we need a little reminder about what matter is. And matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. And oftentimes we will categorize matter as either a substance or a mixture first. A substance is when all of the particles in the matter are identical, and we say it has a fixed composition throughout, whereas a mixture is two or more substances that get physically combined, and so the composition ends up being variable. And we're gonna walk through different types of substances and mixtures, and I think by going through those different types and giving you some real examples, it will help you understand these a little bit better. So first, let's zoom in on types of substances. First and foremost, you have elements, and these are the simplest form of matter from which we make more complex substances. Elements are found on the periodic table that lists all of the elements that we know, and all of the atoms that make up an element are alike. They have the same number of protons because that is what defines an atom as the element that it is. So, for example, helium. It's number two on the periodic table. All atoms of the element helium have two protons. Now, there can be you know, different isotopes of helium and things like that, which we get into in the atomic structure unit. More on that later, but they all have those two protons. So if we were gonna look at the helium that's in these balloons that holds them up, it would look the same throughout. It would have a fixed composition, and that's what makes an element a substance. Now, elements exist kind of two different ways. They can be considered monatomic or diatomic. And so monatomic elements would look like this if we zoom in on a molecular level. Things like helium, argon, neon, they are most stable as an individual atom. They are most stable on their own. Whereas diatomic elements are elements like oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, that are actually more stable when two atoms of themselves are bonded together. So oxygen, when you're breathing in oxygen, in the air around you, you're not just breathing in a bunch of atoms of O, you're breathing in O2 two atoms of oxygen that are chemically combined together as O2. But we still would refer to this just as an element of oxygen or N2 is atmospheric nitrogen. That's the nitrogen that exists in the atmosphere around you is N2. It's two nitrogens chemically combined together. And we'll talk more about bonding in our bonding unit, but elements will bond to be stable. Being stable is a priority for them. But even still, if they're just bonding with themselves, we just would call it a diatomic element. So it's still in that category of element. Now, the other type of substance is a compound. And this is when two or more different elements get chemically combined in a fixed proportion. So we wouldn't say that O2 is a compound, but because it's the same it's atoms of the same element. But in a compound, we're looking at atoms of different elements. And they're going to be combined in a fixed proportion. You can break them down, but only by doing a chemical reaction. And what's interesting about compounds is because they are a new formation, when we do a chemical reaction, we're making new substances. Because they're new, they have properties that are different than the elements that make them up. So for example, sodium chloride, which is table salt, it's what you eat in your food, is one atom of the element sodium chemically combined to one atom of the element chlorine. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a fixed proportion, like mentioned here. But sodium as an individual element is incredibly different from chlorine as an individual element. I mean, we use chlorine to literally clean pools, but yet when it's combined to sodium in a one-to-one -one ratio, you can eat it, and it makes your food taste good. Okay, so that's what we mean by they have completely different properties when they're combined together because they make new substances. Similarly, when we look at water, water is two atoms of the element hydrogen chemically combined with one atom of the element oxygen. It's a two to one ratio in this fixed proportion and it makes water. Very different from the oxygen that you breathe in and then the hydrogen gas, which would exist as H2 on its own. Again, same thing with sugar, C6H12O6. It's six atoms of the element carbon, 12 atoms of the element hydrogen, and six atoms of the element oxygen chemically combined. Can we break this down into carbons and hydrogens and oxygens? Yes. That's what cellular respiration does. We take glucose and we divide it and we break it down in our bodies to get carbon dioxide and, you know, water from it. And also ATP in the form of energy. You learn about that in life science or in um, biology. But together, it's sugar, which is a totally different thing. 
Now, looking at a molecular level, there's a difference between an element and a compound. An element is just one substance in its simplest form. So like oxygen, even though this is diatomic, see how it looks the same throughout. They're all atoms of oxygen. They're all blue. Whereas a compound, like carbon dioxide, look how we have two oxygens to one carbon. So we have a different ratio here. And so, but again, it still looks the same throughout, making it a substance. Now, mixtures are different. A homogeneous mixture, the components are going to be evenly distributed out on a microscopic level. So I find homogeneous mixtures to be the trickiest. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures. That's when we dissolve one substance into another. But they often appear blended, and that's what can kind of make them tricky to identify. Bleach, lemonade, coffee, these are all homogeneous mixtures. They're mixtures because they're physically combined together, not chemically combined like a compound is. Now, a heterogeneous mixture is often the easiest to identify because the substances in the mixture are not evenly spread out. The different components are easy to see or they separate out over time. Salad dressing, paint, cereal, these are all things that we can really see the different components easily, especially I think of paint. When you let a paint can sit out, you get this like layer of liquid and oils at the top, which separates out from the bottom, which is why you have to shake it or stir it before you use it. Now again, let's look at a molecular level, the difference between a homogeneous and a heterogeneous mixture. Homo, that prefix means same. So it's going to have the same or an even distribution throughout. So like salt water, it's going to kind of look the same throughout when you dissolve that salt in water. As opposed to a heterogeneous mixture, which is going to be an uneven distribution. It's going to have a different, because hetero, that prefix means different. It's going to look really different throughout. It may have more layers to it, like a salad dressing would. That's one of the ways we can distinguish between these. Now, we can further subdivide heterogeneous mixtures if you'd like. Um, and these types of heterogeneous mixtures often get confused as homogeneous ones. So you've got to kind of watch out for them and not let them fool you. But there are colloids and suspensions. So a colloid is when small particles remain dispersed, but they often are evenly dispersed throughout the mixture. They are larger, though, than what you would see in a solution, which is what makes it a heterogeneous mixture. So things like fog, milk, humid or dusty air, these are colloids. They can be kind of tricky. Whereas a suspension has larger particles that appear uniformly distributed, but will settle out over time. So again, like oil and water, sand and water, muddy water, these are things that we can see a lot more clearly. Suspensions are a lot easier to identify. And one last cool thing I want to show you is something called the Tyndall effect. This is a scattering of light that occurs in a mixture. So only colloids and suspensions have particles large enough to do this. So homogeneous mixtures or solutions can't. But essentially, you have particles spread throughout so that then when light, rays of light are shining through, they get scattered, and we can see these rays happening. It's a really beautiful thing. You can see some mornings. It's this, this is the rays that you're seeing kind of being scattered out by the particles in the air. That's the Tyndall effect at work. And I like to summarize all of this in a flowchart. I find this the easiest way to kind of remember the differences and keep it all organized. So remember, all matter can be a substance or a mixture. Substances are in fixed proportions. Substances can be elements on the periodic table or chemically combined elements, which make compounds. Mixtures are physically combined. They can be heterogeneous, which have different proportions throughout, or homogeneous, which appear the same throughout. And that is your brief or overview of the classification of matter.